Welcome into the lounge presented by DraftKings. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! This is awesome. We are live from the Counting House here in London, and we have fans from around the globe. I mean, this this is this is lit. I, I have goosebumps right now. Ravens yeah. are getting ready to take on Titans, and it couldn't start any better. Yeah, this is incredible. This shows you the love that the fans have around the world. And if you hear a cheer behind me, that's because somebody has just made his way over here. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the GOAT, Ray Lewis. All right, Ray, we were the biggest celebrities. Thanks a lot for upstaging us now. We're just a couple of peons now. <laughs> hey, man, you know how, how Ravens fans are. What is it like to come here on the other side of the world and see this type of reaction from Ravens fans all the way in London? Baltimore! <laughs> we in the building, baby. We in the building. Nah, man, it's, it's absolutely amazing. And uh, from Baltimore to no matter where it is, bro, ain't nothing like purple love. Ain't nothing like purple love. Had, had, you, have you, had you ever realized that we have such a global fan base? Or is it, you know, when you're in Baltimore, hard to kind of grasp how big this is? It don't matter if it's Baltimore or wherever, baby. It's purple love. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's, it's different. It's different, and uh, for the last 20 plus years, man, it's been absolutely amazing that this is the only culture I care about, you know? It's crazy. Yeah. Ray, you know, these, these international games are something that have grown, and, and you're somebody who's an advocate for the game of football. I mean, you love the game of football. You love what it stands for. You want to help grow the game. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you to see this game growing the way it is internationally. You come over here, you see Ravens fans everywhere, and you know it's going to be a packed house on Sunday. What does it mean to you to see the growth that we're seeing in this game from an international standpoint? I just think the game teaches so much. You know, the game of football, it's an amazing thing when it comes to football, right? But the game teaches you what manhood is, right? It teaches you what fatherhood is. It teaches you what a leader should be. Right? And so no matter where you are across the world, all of those tangible things make sense. So every time that the game spreads, then we have another chance to educate our people. Wow. Well, I mean, we, we got the Titans coming up here, and you know a thing or two about the Tennessee Titans. I, I want to talk a little bit about this rivalry. <laughs> going back, I mean, Steelers, of course, always here, right? But where, where were the Titans kind of on your rivalry rankings? Oh, man. Um, actually, I think the first rivalry ever really created in Baltimore was Baltimore-Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think it, both franchises were really trying to find each other, right, and find out who we were. Pittsburgh at that time was already kind of established, right? So I think we both were chasing the Steelers at one time. And so I think, you know, we was, <laughs> we was trying to kill each other, right? <laughs> trying to get to, you know, to be respected and stuff. So I think those robberies with, um, you know, Wachek and Eddie and Steve McNair and Chi Wiz, man, I tell you, if you want to see a war, a real battle, that's the battle of men. And uh, I think that... That rivalry started way before any other rivalry, for sure. Now, now you and Eddie George definitely had a rivalry. That, that one. <laughs> now, really? I, 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 <laughs> I went back and found some quotes on this one, Ray. Ed, Eddie said, I was willing to die on the football field that day going against you. I think you said there's never been a rivalry between two warriors the way we went at each other. Does, do you kind of still, when I talk about Eddie George, I know you all are kind of friends now, but do you still get that little... That feeling inside of you a little bit? I just left his 50th birthday, man. We're friends. <laughs> I'm not starting anything, I swear. 
<laughs> and uh, look, I think um, I think the game. One of the thing about the game for me and him was, you don't leave the battlefield. Like we wanna, we wanted to see who was gonna be the last man standing, yep. right? The game is a little bit different now, right? Okay. But when we were going at it, I think it was the ultimate respect, right? We came out of college together, and we had a little, you know, a little rumbling early in, <laughs> in my day. And he said I didn't want to see him, and I told him he didn't want to see me. <laughs> So guess what? We ended up seeing each other for years, and it just turned into this thing, man. And, and, and I told him this at his 50th birthday. Seriously, Eddie elevated my game. Like, you had to be ready to play football to play against Eddie. And uh, I still, to this day, like, he's one of my closest friends and one of the greatest warriors ever. You know, when I think about those old school Titans games, I think about when Brian Billick held up the Sports Illustrated in the mm. locker room talking about, you know, they're the best team in the NFL, but not today. Yeah. But not today. And, um, you know, that was, a, that was a big moment for you guys as a team. What did it mean to kind of set that stage, win that game in that, in, that, in that playoff run? I mean, that was kind of a foundational piece of this franchise that you guys built en route to that Super Bowl. But what did it mean to get that one as you guys were establishing yourself as the, I think everyone here would agree, the best defense of all time, right? I mean, the best, the best defense of all time. And how big was that game against the Titans? Yeah, that was the, that was the one thing, right? Seriously, um, that I think we knew between us and Tennessee, whoever won that game was going to win the Super Bowl, right? It, it, was just, it was just simple because it was so physical, between both of us, and, and, and not that we disrespected any other, any other team, but knowing that we was going to Oakland the following week, bad day for Oakland, <laughs> bad day for Oakland. But I think we knew that the road had to go through Tennessee, right? The year before, they had just, won, they had just came from the Super Bowl, and so for us to do what we wanted to do, we knew we had to go to a Duffley Coliseum to win. You know, I, I said that this that defense was the best defense of all time. You guys were dominant, especially in that Super Bowl. Is there any doubt in your mind that's the best defense that's ever stepped on an NFL football field? Are you kidding me? Is there any doubt? Is there any doubt in your mind? Ray, you're allowed to tackle him for that question. <laughs> Just go ahead. Whether <laughs> it depends. What are we negotiating? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. He's in no position I don't want, to negotiate anything with I, you, Yeah, right? I'm in no position to negotiate. <laughs> I don't want to get hit. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, no, let, let's just talk truth, right? <laughs> like, number, numbers don't lie, right? You know them, too. Right? So, so it's like you can, get into a lot of, you can get into a lot of arguments, but it's hard to get into an argument when the entire season – Somebody rushes for less than a thousand yards. Less than a thousand yards, the whole season. season, whole season. Right? That's that's crazy. You got, you got one crazy. guy. You got one guy rushing for two thousand yards. <laughs> right. But you got an entire sixteen weeks where nobody sees a thousand. Right. It's like yeah. that's crazy. Right. It's like going five weeks right without scoring an offensive touchdown, but winning three out of those games. You know? Yeah. Yep. It's like going in the playoffs and giving up one touchdown the entire playoffs. One the whole playoffs. One whole playoff. Whole playoffs. Super Bowl included. Well, right. Super Bowl, that should have been a shutout. That was a defensive yeah. shutout. It was a much. shutout. I don't care what y'all say. Right. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to let y'all say it was a shutout. <laughs> shutout. It was a shutout for sure. <laughs> yeah, man. But it was, it was meant what me and Rob was talking about earlier. That, that defense, that defense was special because of what we was willing to do for each other. Mm -hmm. You know, it was built, it was built with a mix of men that were, I'm telling you still to this day, you know, every one of us look at each other in his eye and say, brother, I love you because of what we sacrifice for each other, you know? And not that no other team didn't sacrifice that, but we had the right mix, it was the right time, and nobody believed in us. So it, there was no pressure. The only people believed in us was Purple Love, right? you see? And so that's, it, takes, it takes a lot of pressure off the game, and then I just think we just did what we did. Now, now, you can never compare another defense, Garrett, to the, <laughs> to the Super Bowl champion defense. But our defense this year is pretty good, too. Our defense is pretty good. we got a good team, right? They're playing well. 
Ray, just kind of what do you see from this Ravens defense led by a guy that you talked to not too, too long ago, Roquan Smith? Yeah, you know, um, I think the, the exciting part about when I watch this defense now, Roquan is kind of what I told him when we did this interview, right? Yep. And so I sat him down and I said, look, I showed him three bad plays, right? And I'm like, no way. Those plays cannot happen, right? Because even though you may know what's going on, you may have a great game. Mm -hmm. But if your defense don't know what's going on, that's a bad game, right. right? So everybody, what I challenge Roquan to do is go communicate with everybody, bro. Like have open conversation that everybody should know, right? Two tight ends in the backfield, two running backs in the backfield, two slot, da da da, whatever it is, right. right? That needs to be screamed out. And he has to understand that, right? And I think when you see us play, we're starting, to, we're starting to kind of tweak into that, right? Like, it's hard to move the ball on us right now, right? It's because we're communicating through that, right? A silent defense is a dead defense, mm -hmm. right? Any yeah. defense that's not talking, if you watch the National Football League, everybody defense head like this. The worst defenses in football never move their heads. Right. Great defenses, it's communication everywhere, man. And I'm telling you, that's what it's, it's really going to take for our defense to take it to the next level. It's all communication. It's not athletic. Yeah. It's not athletic. Athleticism for them is easy. You know, I think it's, it's about communication. Now, I'm curious because, you know, Roquan, his leadership is pretty unique. I, I think he's an awesome, awesome yeah. leader. And I, I agree. I think what you're saying of elevating the guys around him, you are seeing more and more of that. And I think we saw that certainly, you know, even last year. But I think he's taken it to another step. Yeah. You know, a lot of people have been saying, Man, Roquan's, Roquan's been giving me some Ray vibes. You know, he's been giving me Ray vibes. Lamar said it. When, Lamar said Lamar it. Basically, said it. he's our version. You when, know? when you hear that, what goes through your head? <laughs> there we go. Yeah, it's, it's only one sugar now. It's only one sugar. <laughs> no, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's beautiful. Um, because of the time we spent together, man, you know, yeah. I coached the Pro Bowl last year. We spent a lot of time together at the Pro Bowl. Just me talking him through it, right, like how fast the game is and everything. But in, on every great team, right, there has to be a designated leader. There has to be someone that has one voice, right, and everybody else rallies behind that. And I think, honestly, I think Roquan is that guy, you know, but he has to – and it's his second year, right? Yep. He has to take ownership in that, right? And everybody else has to follow that. And I think they have it. I don't know. I'm not in that locker room every day, but I can tell you this. It looks like they're, they're brewing something, right? It's something stirring up over there. Yep. What, what I think is cool, Ray, is like, you know, Lamar, Odell, right? Like, massive superstars. Massive superstars. But Roquan, to me, is the heart and soul of the Ravens right now. And it's kind of cool. Now, you're, you're a massive superstar, too. But it's kind of cool because it reminds me of when you were playing here, right? Like, how many teams in today's NFL can say, I, we got a middle linebacker as the heart and soul of the team? You know what I mean? Yeah. Let me, let me help you out a little bit, right? There's a difference between a superstar and a rock star. Yep. Right? <laughs> Superstars, they're amazing. Rock stars change people. Mm. Right? Like, rock stars make everybody around them better, yep. you know? And so I'm telling you, Roquan has the ability to be a rock star, right? Because right? he has that ability, you know? And so for me to watch this play out this whole season, you will know, by the way, everybody starts to communicate on that defense, right? Because it's a special thing. When you see it, you see it. Yep. And, and, and so I'm, I'm waiting to see that. Yeah, yeah Absolutely. Another guy I want to get your perspective on is, is Lamar Jackson. I mean, Lamar Jackson is maybe the most fun player to watch in the NFL. He's electric. Ravens got him signed to the long-term contract this offseason. When you're watching the games, and I know you watch every game. You watch every Ravens game. You're yelling at the TV, I'm sure, as those games are taking place. How much fun do you, how much fun do you have watching Lamar, the way he plays the game, the energy, the excitement that he brings to football? You know, some people, some people play the game because of, of the position. Lamar plays the game because he's a football player. <laughs> right, it's, it's, you can't teach that, right? Which is why 
he plays the quarterback position like a running back. Right? <laughs> He's not going to play it the way you want him to play it. And that's what makes him so dynamic. Right, it's because he's willing to go through wherever he needs to do, right? Take whatever hit he needs to take, whatever it is, which you don't want a quarterback to do that. <laughs> but if you Lamar, let Lamar dance, right? You got to let Lamar. I think over time, with everything that he learns, maturity finds you over time, right? And then he's going to understand. Maybe I'm dynamic with my legs, but if I take a really slow pace of learning what the game means all the way around, I get better, I get better, I get better, I get better. And that's why I think his, I think his, he hasn't hit a ceiling yet, right? I think we've just seen him so he's so dynamic, right? We're just like, oh my gosh, that's the most amazing run ever, right? But when you're the fastest kid in the park, you're still the fastest kid in the park, right? So it doesn't matter. But when it comes to him really taking ownership, full ownership of that, you, I just think he hasn't hit a ceiling yet. So I'm excited to see it. Yeah, I, th I think he will. And, and yeah. this is the last one that I got for you, Ray. When you, you're going to be in the game on Sunday, what do, you, what do you expect? You know, what do you expect the way the Ra for the Ravens in terms of how they play? What do you expect from the fans? What do you expect from the crowd, the atmosphere? What are your expectations for this team on Sunday against the team that you know well, the Tennessee I think Titans? It's a, I think it's an unfair expectation for me to tell you. I'm not in the locker room. <laughs> now, if you want me to text right? Roquan, ask Roquan what I think. <laughs> All right, well, we did ask Roquan. Nah, I think he feels pretty nah, good about it. He nah, feels pretty good about but it. But I will tell you, um, I think they're up for the challenge for Derrick Henry. I think it's going to be <laughs> – we get to find out a battle this week, right? Because Derrick Henry is Derrick Henry. And it's going to be a tough football game. You got a little Eddie George in him? Huh? You got a little Eddie George in him, Derrick Henry? Derrick Henry got a little Eddie George in him. For sure. Yeah, he's so a... This, game, this game's kind of a throwback then. It's a throwback. But, but Roquan's a got old. a little Ray in him too. Yeah, it's no. an old Roquan's school. Roquan's got throwback. a little Ray. Yeah. I, I, I got to ask you one more, Ray. I mean, not many people get to ride off in the sunset the way you did. I mean, that, that's just how it's supposed to be done, right? Do you ever still pinch yourself and look back on your career and, and just like, golly, that, that could not have gone any better at the end. And one place the whole time. One team. One team. Yeah. Well, look, I'm, I'm statue and everything. That boy's so good. statue. Give him a statue pose. I, I tell you this, right? A lot of people, a lot of people don't appreciate what they've done in the game, right? But there's not too many times that I don't get up in the morning and put on these right here. Ooh. You see? Yeah, look at those. It just, look at those right it just there. it's not, right? Because the MVP ring just tells you I had some hell of a teammate. <laughs> right? And the Hall of Fame ring tells you that I was just that dude. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> just, <laughs> like all the hard work, right? All the hard work, all of the sacrifice, all of the ups, the downs, right? When you represent a gold jacket, you appreciate every second of life, yeah. right? The game, the game was exciting, but on this side of the game, the way I am now, I would never go back because <laughs> I gave the game everything I had. Yep. You awesome. see? So, yeah. Awesome. I appreciate well, you guys, man. Well, this is hey, amazing. Hey, thanks for getting us a Baltimore! Yeah. Let's go! See, we can come take over London now. We take over everywhere we go, baby. <laughs> Purple love, baby. Purple love. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Ray Lewis one more time. Give it up for Ray Lewis. That's pretty awesome. That was awesome. I mean, I mean, it, it, it's crazy. I mean, I grew up. I grew up. Watching that dude, you know. I, I know you're. I know you're an Ohio guy, Garrett. But I'm a Maryland guy. There he goes. Through. And uh, you know, being a kid, watching that guy and being like, oh my, that's that's when you fall in love with Ravens football. When you watch Ray Lewis and the way he plays the game, yeah, it's pretty easy. Yeah. I mean, look, Ray Lewis is somebody who's a, is an iconic player. 
obviously. Yeah. And he really set the foundation, the trajectory of this organization. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what's so cool. And, and, and the other part of it, like we just talked about at the end, it was he, he, he was a great player. He won two Super Bowls, of course. But he really set the foundation that I think still exists to this day. And there's, there's, not, there's only one guy still on the team who played with him. And that is Justin Tucker. AT. Justin Tucker's the only guy left, which is hard to believe. But the values that he put into place have kind of been passed down. So it went from him, and then it was Terrell Suggs that kind of carried that. And then he continued to pass that on to some players who are currently on this team. You know, like a Marlon Humphrey, for example, who played with, with Suggs. And, and so that it kind of gets passed down from year to year. And now, you know, we spent a good amount of time talking about Roquan Smith. I think that Roquan obviously – has elements of what Ray brought as well. Yeah, absolutely. My, my favorite part really was when you asked Ray whether the 2000 defense is the best of all time. You know, and he looked at you like, what, do you, what the heck are you talking about, buddy? You know what that is? That was the best one. You know, you know what we call that? We just call that putting it on a tee. <laughs> I was just putting that on a tee for him. I just wanted him to hit it out of the park, just toss it up there and say, all right, Ray, give me the good stuff the right here. The give me the good stuff right here. And that's exactly what he did. He knew it. He knew what was happening. He knew what was happening. Well, well, this Ravens defense is ranked second pretty much across the board right now in the league. And obviously, number one is where you want to finish, but second ain't too shabby, right? Second in points allowed per game, second in yards per game, second in sacks, which, you know, considering especially all the, the hand-wringing that was going on around the Ravens' pass rush at the beginning of the year is pretty darn impressive, and especially considering the injuries. I yeah. mean, goodness gracious, you have a lot of injuries in the secondary. You don't have your best cornerback for the first four weeks of the season. Yeah. And to still be ranked second in the league is pretty darn impressive. I think this defense is really good. I, yeah. I do. I think this defense is an excellent defense. I think that situationally, you know, they, they want to get better in certain spots. They don't want to give up that big play to Pickens, you know, against sure. uh, the Steelers last week. They know that in certain situations they need to improve. Yep. But overall, I think this is a great defense. Like, I, I don't see many teams putting up a lot of points on this defense. I, what, are, what's, what, are, what do you guys think? Are many teams going to score on the Ravens this year? No. I mean, no. It's, it, maybe a field goal, like you said. Maybe a field goal. Maybe maybe maybe, 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 maybe field goal. <laughs> but, like, I just don't see many teams scoring on the Ravens that much this year. No, no. I, and, and really, the offense, as we've seen, you know, there's been some hiccups. There's been turnovers and stuff. But I really like the potential of this offense. And you've seen it in spurts, right? You see what this offense can be, especially as they get healthier. And so, you know, just having Ray here, you kind of compare it to teams of the past, right? And and no, no defense is going to be as dominant as the 2000 defense, obviously. But I think that this year's offense, if they can kind of put the pieces together, they can be better certainly than the 2000 offense was. And I think they can be better than the 2012 offense was. I mean, it wasn't like that offense was lighting the world on fire. Joe got on a heater in the playoffs. Right. And, and they, I, Bolden was a, a dog. <laughs> he was a dog. And Quan Bolden, always a dog. Senior dog there, Ray. Yeah. Senior dog. Um, but, you know, I think this offense, this is the best collection of playmakers the Ravens have ever had, bar none. They get, need to get healthy and stay healthy. But I, I really think that once they put the two pieces together, this defense and this offense, I genuinely feel in my gut that this is going to be a special team. Well, I don't think the Ravens feel like they've played a complete game yet. I feel like they've, they've had elements of it, and you've seen flashes, and there's been times when the offense is good, and you see there's been times when the defense is really good. But they haven't completely put it together to the level that they think they can. And I think that's coming. I think I really believe that, that is, that's going to be here before we know it. And with the offense, like I talked about the situational stuff with the defense, I really think that like on the offensive side, that's the case too. And, and like maybe even more so. I think that there's some key situations where this offense needs to be able to come up with some, a first down, move the chains, that type of thing, and, um, and, and then they'll be okay. We got, we got Poe firing up the crowd yeah, up the po, here. I mean, Poe's po I mean, always firing up the crowd, which I love. I think we got the cheerleaders. Pretty sure if we have any more injuries, Poe's coming in. Yeah. Poe's always ready. He's ready. He's healed up. He's healed. Exactly. He's recovered. He's recovered. Don't He's bring up injuries. Don't bring up injuries with Poe. <laughs> Sore subject. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, we talk about this offense, and, and – the good news, too, is it's getting healthier, right? So uh, just to bring it to the news section of the day, yeah. uh, the Ravens really are the healthiest that they've been all season long going into this London game. Who likes a healthy Ravens team? Yeah. I mean, goodness gracious, right? And so, I mean, right now, Morgan Moses, no injury designation. 
right? He's good to go for this game. So it looks like the offensive line is going to be at full strength. Pat McCarry's back. Uh, the only guy who's been rolled out for this game is Adafi Owe. Uh, and so this is the healthiest the Ravens have been all year long. And I think that that really gives them. Plus, you have Marlon Humphreys one game more under his belt. He's a little bit more comfortable on that foot. You know, he only played about half the snaps last week. And, and you have other guys who have kind of broken in now. Odell, you know, he said he feels a lot better this week. So I think from an injury standpoint, the puzzle pieces are also starting to come together. Yeah, Marcus Williams as well. I mean, Marcus played last week, and you could tell he was still favoring that arm a yeah. little bit. And that's going to be something that he works through. And John Harbaugh said this week, you know, that's something that, you know, he'll just get more comfortable with it. It'll feel better. You'll get more used to it. It'll continue to heal. And so that's, you know, like you expect him to see, to see progress there. And so, like, we, we spent all that time talking about this great defense. Okay, now add in Marlon Humphrey. Now add in Marcus Williams. Whoa, okay. It's like now this defense has been playing really well. Yeah. You get those guys playing – kind of at full strength, and they can be even better. And yeah, and then on the offensive side, I mean, I, this offensive line has, has been banged up on and off over the course of this season. Ronnie Stanley's missed time. Morgan Moses has missed time. And so now they're going to be getting healthy. Yep. And I think that that's going to open up a lot of things for this team. So, um, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, for sure. All right, now we want to welcome in our next guest, another Hall of Famer, Safety Rod Woodson. Yeah, for Rod Woodson. Let's go. Hey, Rod. What's going on, guys? What up? Thanks for doing this, man. Good to be here. Oh, you got some Guinness. Oh, I, <laughs> I have no Guinness. Yeah, we need you to get a beer. We need to get Rod. Man a Someone beer. Someone needs to get this man a beer. Someone needs to get this man a beer over here. I gotta have a Guinness. Gotta have. A I was giving Garrett a, a hard time. Guinness when you come over. Exactly. I mean, he just doesn't even know how to do it here in London. You know, I said I would. I, I had to keep a clear mind during the podcast. You know, to make sure to keep him in line. So that's really the main reason. <laughs> okay, I hear you. I got you. <laughs> so, Rob, what do you think of London, man? I love it. I've been here five, six times. Love the area. Love the culture. I love the architect. Yeah. The architect. old buildings, the old limestone. Just the way that history. Yeah. You don't get that in the States. You yep. know, it's very rare to find something like that in the States. So to see that on a consistent basis, going around seeing all the old cathedrals, that it's, it's beautiful. When we checked into our hotel, they told me it was built in the 1400s. I was like, huh? How old is that? This the hotel you... that we're in? No, 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 no you're good. Oh. They also hotel. told me it might be haunted, so the you don't got to worry. The only thing I have issue with is the size of the elevators. <laughs> <laughs> They're like... They're about that big. I mean, you can't get nobody in there. Yeah, Just true. think about how the time. What a defensive time. lineman would feel. <laughs> They're not getting in there. Only one defensive lineman can get in the elevator at a time. <laughs> you, you know, I was on the uh, bus tour with you earlier today, and it was fun to, to ride around London, and, and, you know, you see Ravens fans here. And obviously you see Ravens fans here at the, at the pub tonight. How awesome is it to see the love? Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, get it. Hey. There we go. Hey. In the flock, the best. I gotta yeah, let I mean, the Guinness. I gotta let it do its work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gotta wait to drink it. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, I mean, as you see right there, there's no better fans. You know, what does it what does it mean when you see Ravens fans all around town coming across the ocean and, and being here for this game all over the world to be here? I mean, it's you know, I've seen the growth yeah. of the Raven Nation, right? I've seen that like coming in when I got there. It was the third year, and. Each year has gotten bigger and better and better. I remember the first year, the fans would cheer when the offense had the ball. <laughs> right? And the band would be playing when the offense had the ball. Yeah. And they learned, ah, oh, no, you can't do that. So the They just learned that, that from the Cleveland days, Rod. They brought that from Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> so to see that, to see the growth on a consistent basis, it's been amazing. Yeah, that's really cool. And for you, you know, we were talking about with Ray about how great the defense was that you guys had. Obviously, you Having great Ray players. Lewis? Yeah, Ray, you ever heard yeah, of him? Yeah, he was all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the young buck you took under your wing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, tell he us was, he, was a, he, was, he was a baby when I got there, uh -huh. but uh, very talented. Um, the one thing I loved about Ray is that anything that I would talk about, he implemented. Mm. I mean, he was the leader because they looked at me like I'm like Grandpa. I'm like Uncle, <laughs> Uncle Rod. <laughs> they saw me as like the older guy, so they wouldn't listen to me. But everything that Ray said, his contemporaries in the room, they knew that he was going to be serious. And the way he grew, and I arguably say all the time, I think he became the best leader of men on the field and off the field that I've ever been around. 
Yeah. We were asking Ray about, you know, the, the Roquan. There's a lot of comparisons going around right now, and I know that's... Uh, wait, ain't no... no. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. I've said it too, right? He's in the room. <laughs> he ain't Ray Lewis. <laughs> All right? He, but he's moving in that direction. Yeah. So bringing... I mean, when Roquan came over, what he did to the defense yeah. after he got there is in the same category, kind of where Ray has gone with it. And the way... If you listen to all the other defensive players, the way he's elevated their play in the meeting room, you know, on the practice field, in the workouts, he's made them better. Yeah. That's what I'd say. Hey, he's in the room with Ray, yep. but Ray Lewis is at another level. I think I'm mean, one of the best linebackers. I mean, that's a good. Could be the individual best defensive player ever. Right. Right. That's one. <laughs> And then, arguably, the best linebacker to ever play in the National Football League. Yeah, uh, absolutely, absolutely. So, Rod, Rod, you know, you're with the team all the time, you know, doing your, the broadcasting gig. You're doing a lot of stuff, by the way. You keep yourself busy, my man. Busy man. You are I don't a busy like man. Be, I don't like being idle. So, way back in the day, Dan Rooney was the owner of the yep. Steelers. The one thing he told me is that be very careful of retirement. Yeah. And I, it didn't sink in until yeah. I retired. And I said, man, I hate sitting around. I love my wife, right? <laughs> I love my wife and kids. I don't like being around the house. I yeah. like being out. So I, I love being active. Yeah. So you were in Pittsburgh, and obviously that was a tough one, you know. How does a team come back from a loss like that? How do you handle it and just kind of shake it off and, and turn the page? I mean, that's a great question because, Mike, when I always look at teams, I see leaders on the defense. So my question for the Ravens is that who is that leader on the offense? Mm. Who's going to be that guy when things are kind of going sideways like they did last week, mm. right? Drops and bad throat. All those things was happening last week. Who's going to be that individual player on the offensive side to say, come on, man, snap out of it. Get your, butt out. Get your head out of your butt. Let's play the way we're supposed to be playing. Let's play Raven football. I'm looking for that individual player on the offensive side. And I'm still trying to figure, is it going to be Lamar? Is it going to be OBJ? Is it going to be Mark Andrews? Which one of those guys is going to be Ronnie Stanley? Which one of those guys is going to step up in a game when it's kind of going sideways Mm -hmm. on the offensive side and correct it? On the sideline. Coaches can't do it all the time. Coaches can't always come over and say, get your head out of your butt. (laughs) Players got to do that. I mean, Ray did it quite often when we were playing together. I, I was so. going to say, yeah, back in the 2000 days, did you guys ever have to go up to the offense and say, <laughs> snap out? No, you know, our, you know what we used to do? So every, every Friday, me, Ray, and Shannon will get in the sauna, okay. and we would be talking about what we're going to do, and then we'll look at Shannon and say, okay, how many points you got for us? <laughs> and Shannon would be like, hey, we got like 13 and a possible. <laughs> We're like, if you give us 13, oh, we're going to win. We we'll win. That. We'll, we'll, we can, we're okay with that one. <laughs> but with, with Shannon was kind of that guy. Yeah, he, he really was. Was he that guy back in the day? Well, he talked a lot. <laughs> <laughs> he did talk a lot. You know, but he was, you know, it was to the point where, you know, having a guy like him, because remember, when Shannon came in, he, he made some plays during the year, but once the postseason hit, he made one big play. And every single game. Yep, yep it's true. So that every, becomes, yep. and that's what leaders need to do. We didn't need him during the season, but we needed him during the postseason. And then when you look at all those big plays, when we played Denver and that ball pounds up in the air and he catches it and he goes the other way. The Raiders. We played the Raiders. And, and how nobody caught him, because Shannon's not real fast. It's <laughs> well, like, how can none of these guys the catch Shannon Sharp? Uh-huh. <laughs> but he made another big play. And that's what leaders do. They make big plays when they're counted upon. You know, you, uh, to the point of you knowing this team, you're, you're obviously around them. And so I'm just curious. We were just spent some time talking about this defense and how they're one of the, they're one of the best in the league early mm-hmm. on. Now, in certain situations, they, they, they need to get better, and obviously they can't have the big play they gave up on Sunday in Pittsburgh. But what are your impressions of this defense as a whole, and uh, do you think that they're one of the best in the league that you've seen so far? They're definitely one of the best defenses in the league. I think the Ravens roster is one of the best rosters in the league. It's young. It is young. You have younger players. So bringing in a Davion Clowney, that was a huge pickup. Huge pickup. 
I don't think people really realize he's been in the backfield every single game, like causing havoc for the quarterback. He hasn't got, I mean, he's got a sack or so, but, I mean, he's been back there making the quarterback very uncomfortable. You know, getting, you got to get a job all back. Owe has to get healthy. When everybody gets healthy again, bringing in Van Noy, and everybody's like, well, what can Van Noy do? I'm like, you don't need to learn a lot to say, I'm here, the quarterback's there. Go get him. Go get him. <laughs> that's all you got to do. Yeah. And he played 25 plays, 30 plays the first. That's all you, and that's what you get from veterans. So having those guys around, I think they're going to keep growing. Mike McDonald's done a really good job. You know, obviously, you know, Marlon coming back, can't give up the big plays, can't give up no seams, no posts, no goes. You can't do that. That's not Raven defense. But overall, collectively, they've made it tough for offenses. They make quarterbacks very uncomfortable. They made them normally, you know, one-sided where they had to have one running back to get over 100 yards this year. That's not normal for a Raven defense, so I know they'll correct that. But to see where they're growing, it's a young football team. And to see this Todd Munkin offense grow each week, that's going to be the key. As they keep growing, as OBJ and I think I think Nelson Aguilar, all those guys, Ronnie getting back, all those guys and everybody gets healthy and watch them just kind of develop. One thing I think they can't ever lose is the run game. Keep the run game going. And play pass off of that, and that's what they can be their best on the offensive side. Yeah, you no, know, I think like that we put so much into every single game, win loss, and you know you, you win yeah, a game. We overreact. And, yeah, every everybody does. Yeah, it's overreaction Monday, and you can. It, there's the swings throughout the season. You know, even go back to when the Ravens went 14 and two in 2019. They were two and two after the first four games, and they rattled off of the 12 straight right. wins, and they went 14 and two. No one was saying that when they were two and two. I'm curious for you, when you I go back to the 2000 team, like at what point did you feel like it was a special team? It's because obviously that team had its ups and downs, and most of the, the downs were really on the offensive side, obviously. But like at what point did you feel like that was a special team that could go on and do what it did? I knew it that, like, I saw the growth each year. So in 98, where we're 6 and 10, we weren't that good. Then the next year, Brian Billy comes in. We're eight and eight. You can kind of see the growth each year. And then when we got to training camp, and the first year, you know, one of our goals was to in practice on defense. Everybody was going to run to the football. The first year, some guys did, some guys didn't. The second year, everybody started buying into it. The third year. Everybody, I'm talking big Tony Saragusa, Sam Adams, all those big guys, all those guys were running to the football and touching the ball. And then that kind of, when that, when I saw that consistently, that's when I'm like, we're going to be pretty good. And not really knowing how good we're going to be, but then once we just started playing, realizing ain't nobody moving Tony Saragusa and Sam Adams in the middle. Those guys were massive. And I know Goose had the biggest personality, but Sam Adams was a beast. Oh, yeah, he was. I mean, I've never seen ridiculous. a guy that big be that quick and almost tackle quarterbacks before he handed the ball off multiple times throughout a year. I'm like, like, man, how you get that? You're that big, but you're quick as you feel like you're, it looked like he was quick as I was getting back there, making yeah. plays. So seeing that and realizing as a defensive back, I don't have to worry about the run. Right. We just take care of the pass. They take care of the run. We're going to be really good. And then we started realizing as the year went on, you get if we can get seven points, we're going to win. That's all you needed. That's That's what, all you we needed. really believe that. If, you got, if our offense gives us seven, we're good. That's awesome. Rod, I'm, I'm curious for your take on, on Kyle Hamilton from one safety to another. You know, yeah. and, and he's a different kind of cat. I mean, he's, Man, he's, he's got long. Like three or he's four way bigger. On you, he's right? way bigger than me, right. longer than I am. He went to a terrible school in Notre Dame, but <laughs> okay. I'm going to let that go because that's right down the street from my hometown of Fort Wayne, Indiana. So he's South Bend. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, he's so long. And, I, you know, what I love seeing is that Mike McDonald using him, yeah. what he does well. He can get to the quarterback. And what it, it, what it doesn't really look like is he's running really fast because he has long strides. Mm-hmm. And his one stride is probably three of my steps. Right. And he's covering ground. So, like, his blitzing, he's gotten better blitzing. He's, got, he's a really good open tackler. He's good at covering tight ends. 
that's a one I think Mike has done a wonderful job of seeing him grow and the way he has grown in a year and a half yeah. is really impressive because I know my my second year I wasn't that good <laughs> I mean he's played way better than I did my second wow. year so he his growth where he's at is a is surpassed where I was at at a young wow. player so he's still growing I know he's still learning I think I love to see him be a leader like start being more vocal but I think that'll come along with his positive play that he's been having so far yeah well you know you, you talk about the pass rush that he provides you know he didn't have a single sack in college so that just shows Notre Dame didn't know how to use him right right <laughs> That's right. See, there you, I'm, go. you know See, what I'm saying? That's what I'm, I'm just helping you out here. Notre Dame. Your case. Yeah. I mean, what were they doing? Uh, no, that, that's pretty awesome. I mean, this defense, it is pretty remarkable given all the injuries, how good they're, you know, how good they've been. And Tyus Bowser's coming back too, right? What is it about what Mike does? Like, how do you think he empowers the players? What stands out to you about how Mike structures things? Well, he's done a good job of making the, dis- well, the disguise has been really good. Yeah. So showing one thing and doing another. Um, last year, he was more single high defense. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of the year, he started going to like a two-shell defense, but still blitzing from that look. And he had a lot of success. Yeah. And I think he realized, it's like, if we can blend this defense, will we, yeah, we bring our, our defensive front is going to be physical. And at the end of the day, the interior front have to be good. So Michael Pierce, all those guys, they have to be solid. If they're solid, the defense is solid. Right. If they're not solid, they're going to have some interior runs. That's when you kind of break everything down. But Mike has done a really good job of seeing individual players. Like, you look at Patrick Queen. He, he'll bring Patrick Queen quite a bit on blitzes. Right. And Patrick Queen, is ext- he became, he's become a really good blitzing linebacker, which is it's hard to find. Yeah. Well, those double A gap blitzes that they show all the time. And, and then with him, and then Roquan Smith is Roquan is that old school guy. It was two games ago where he cleaned up a pile on the outside, where so they, the receiver caught a little quick pass, and he went from the middle of the field all the way to the sideline and cleaned them all up. And I was like, that. Yeah, well, the that's old off. school football. <laughs> Popped pop his helmet off, maybe on that one. <laughs> Yeah, that is. I mean, that is old school football. The other thing, old school football, I, I feel like we talked with Ray about this a little bit, but Titans, Ravens. I mean, this is like an old school uh, kind of game. And it, that's what, I, that's Ray's breakout game. That was, that was his. That was his coming out party. Coming right? to because I used to tell Ray like, what what big play to have you made in a big game. Well, that was his first time being in the playoffs, right? You would, you would, you would call him out? Smack? You well, were chirping at him he knows that. So, well, you know, <laughs> when I first got there, he was like, yeah, you know, I led the team in tackles. I'm like, well, there's 32 other guys that have done that. <laughs> yeah, or Ooh, 31 man. other guys because there's 32 teams. Right. 31 other guys yeah. had was the leading tackler team. And the growth that he had, and then that play when the ball was thrown to Eddie George and it bounced off Eddie George and Ray got it and ran it in to seal the, the victory, that was his – I, in a big, big, big game, critical play in a big moment. That was his coming out part. That was his genesis of the Ray Lewis that you saw for the rest of his career making those big plays. Yeah. Now, I, I know you remember this moment from Brian Billick in the locker room after the playoff win, and um, we can't repeat the word yeah. that he used here yeah, uh, I don't, live I don't, on the I don't lounge. cuss. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, you know, he said it. The Titans, right? Bleep. Yeah, bleep the Titans after that one. And, I mean, the emotion in his voice. I mean, what was it about the Titans that you guys just didn't like? They thought they were better than we were. Nope. I mean, just to be honest, I mean, they thought they were better. They thought they were all that in the back of chips. They were one of the better teams, you know, coming into the regular season. They had a really good regular season. They didn't think we were good enough offensively. You know, and they had that first march, and they went down the field, and they scored, and we are like, and I remember Brian Billick went over to Ray, and Ray was like, not now. Don't do it. I got it. <laughs> and he came over and basically talked to everybody like, hey, get your heads out your butt. We need to make sure we play the way we're supposed to play. The rest of the game, we played the way we're supposed to play. But it was that, like, leading up to Jeff Fisher saying little mark remarks in the, in the media the guys making comments in the media or throughout the whole week. We're like, yeah, okay. We're just waiting. 
So we really waited to make those comments to after the game was over, and then Brian kind of tapped it off with the cherry on top and said, you know, <laughs> F these dudes. <laughs> how, how much does that, in the course of a week, kind of motivate you, the stuff that's out there? You know, that, that guys say, how much did you pay attention to that? It's the old thing, a bulletin board material. And, you know, Roquan Smith, is he's not been afraid to provide that. And he right. basically just says, hey, I'm just going to tell you what I think. And if you don't like it too bad, I'm being matter of fact. I'm not trying to try to beat you in front of your wife and kids. Like, that's how right. he talks. You know, right. but, that, but how much did you use the bulletin board uh, material? Uh, and I, You know, I didn't, I didn't need somebody to tell me. Right. That's like I think I wrote play at a high point. level. Right. Like. I stepped on the field. I'm like, listen, you think you can get open? Okay. <laughs> Let's try. <laughs> I don't, you're not going to get open. And if you do catch it, I'm going to – well, back in the day, we could body slam them, right? So we could souffle them <laughs> back can't in do, the day. You can't do that anymore. You can't do that anymore. <laughs> but, you know, did it, you know, having that – I think there's a really fine line to be in a strong belief in who you are. I had great belief in who I was. I wasn't arrogant. I wasn't cocky. I did – try to have a swagger when I stepped on the field. But I was like that when I was a skinny little fart kid in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And I used to go down to the park. I had nappy head. I weighed probably 80 pounds. And I thought I was that guy. I wasn't, but I thought I was that guy. So it was always there. And then I kind of grew into it. And then, But when I played, I didn't need anybody to tell me to go out there and play my best. I had some great games. And I got some games where, you know, it's an old saying where, hey, you're going to get the bear, the bear's going to get you. But as long as you get the bear more than he gets you, you're playing really good football. And that's what I believe. And so, yeah, did I get beat sometimes? Yeah. Did I get souffléed by an offensive lineman my rookie year? Uh, yes, I did. <laughs> is that like learning how to play in the National Football League? Yes, it is. But you learn, and I always say you never lose. You always learn. If you don't, if you don't learn from the mistake you made inside of a play, then you did lose. Yep. So for me, it was never a loss. It was always a learning experience. And I took that each week. And as a coach, you, be, you start telling your guys. And I, when I became a coach, I realized what they're really saying. You can't be that repeat offender. I told you not to do something. Dude, don't do it again. And if you do it over and over and over, those are the guys that are going to be normally sitting on the bench. Right. Now, you, you're like the OG ball hawk of the Ravens, right? What, what is it that you're looking for? Before you get an interception, what's going on in Rod Woodson's head? Well, when they threw the ball, it was mine. <laughs> it's like, we I'm get like, you a Rod receiver, wasn't too? Even, I wasn't Rod, even, why didn't you play well, receiver, they too? Say they, well, they say that, that the quarterback is throwing it to the receiver, but I always said, listen, well, the only way I can get the ball <laughs> as a defensive back is to get an interception. And if he's throwing in my direction, I'm, my first thing was in my mind was interception, Knockdown, tackle. Most of the guys think tackle, knockdown, interception. Right. Now, my, my mindset was I'm going to the ball. I'm going through the receiver to the ball because if you make contact the same time the ball gets there, it's not pass interference. Right. So I'm getting to the ball as fast as I can. So I was always trying to get to the ball. I remember Tony Dungy told me when I was a rookie, if you catch the ones that come, you, come your way, you lead the league. It's just hard to do when you're a defensive back sometimes. Sometimes you get kind of lazy, and you, like, look up there, and a the ball hits you right there, and next thing you know, it's on the ground. <laughs> so for my, my, my mentality was always when the ball's thrown my direction, that's my ball. That's yeah. not the receiver's ball. How, how, did, how did you get such good hands? Because, you know, there's a saying in football, you know, he plays DB for a reason, right? But yeah. you... What was Did you always have good hands or were you a receiver growing up? What was it? I played offense growing up, but the same thing with Ed Reed, right? So, yeah. like, the Ed Reeds, the Troy Palomalus, the Ronnie Lotz of the world, yeah. those type of players, those type of players were great athletes that chose to play defense. Mm. I'm pretty sure that Troy could have played offense. I'm pretty sure that Ed Reed could have played offense. They chose to play defense. I chose to play defense. I was a I was All-State, All-American on offense, but also an All-American in defense. And then when I got to Purdue, they were like, and there were schools recruiting me to play offense. Was it running back or what was it? It was like slot receiver, running back, okay. that hybrid. And then when I got to Purdue, they were like, oh, are you going to play free safety? You're like, yes, sir. And, we, and I was like, okay, uh, let's play free safety. And then, then when I got to the league, they are like, how fast are you? Oh, you're going to play corner. I'm like, oh, what? I can't play corner. Wait a minute. I don't know how to play corner. <laughs> but growing to do that, and then when I got back 
when I first got to Baltimore, I played corner and I played the nickel. And then when I moved to safety that third year, it was like, you know how when you go home and you get in your couch and you go, whoo, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm back home. This is where I'm supposed to be the whole time. I mean, my interception rates went way up my last five years in playing safety than playing corner. Yeah. Just the comfortability. But it's a little easier finding a ball playing safety than it was playing corner. But that mindset it was always there for me. Well, say, it's, it's interesting that, you know, there's not too many guys that make the transition to corner when they get into the NFL. But that's what you did. That's what I did. I played yeah. safety my whole life from nine years old all the way through Purdue. I played corner. I ran my 40 at the combine. They're like, uh, you're a corner. Yeah. You're a 430, 428. Uh, yeah, you're going to be a corner. Yeah. And right. I didn't learn- know you were that fast. 428. Yeah, I got it. I, was, I ran scared. Woo! I ran scared. <laughs> but I had, I was blessed though, my first two, two and a half, three years to have Tony Dungy. Yeah. Great human being. Yeah. Great man. And he was a coach that didn't yell at me because I didn't like coaches yelling at me. He didn't yell at me. He just kind of loved on me. Just kept asking me, what are you doing, son? What are you doing out there? And sometimes I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing out here. I'm just out here. (laughs) And he just kept loving on me. And then that third year clicked. In my third year, everything clicked for me. And I went to seven straight Pro Bowls before my injury. I I kept playing corner until I got to Baltimore. And then I got to move to my real home. The safety position. Yep. And it worked out pretty well. Well, Rod, we, we really enjoyed talking with you. It's been awesome to catch up and get your take on this team and also your take on London. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up one more time for Rod Woodson, Hall of Famer in the house. Cheers. Woo! Cheers, Rod. And, and big shout-out to the guy that got you the beer. That's the real, that's the real <laughs> champion. <laughs> Thanks, Rod. Well, this is going to be really fun. Pretty cool to have two defensive goats. Yeah. Come on the lounge. I mean, look, the, the, both those guys are uh, they're two of the best players to ever play the game. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's awesome to see him embrace uh, Ravens fans and embrace the organization. And, you know, Rod, Rod does uh, the play-by-play, or the, he's the uh, color analyst yeah. on all of our radio games uh, alongside Jerry Sandusky. So he knows this team. He, he's at every game watching it closely. And I think that both those guys just have incredible perspective. And it was just fun. You know, it's fun. I think it's awesome to see the reaction they got from the fans here. So I'm, I'm fired up. Yeah, this, this, is, uh, this is a lot of fun. Thanks for coming out, everybody. Yeah, thank this you, everybody, is, for being here. This is awesome. It, it's, it's really humbling. I mean, this podcast started, uh, gosh, how long ago was it? Yeah, I think it was 2017. I think that was 2017. Or maybe 16. The years all kind of run together. Yeah, but it's and, in that range. And we're over 500 episodes now. Yeah. And to see fans come out here like this and say, oh, man, I've always been listening. I've been there from the beginning. Uh, and especially our international listeners. Yeah. That's what's been really cool. It's like, I feel like they were like our first lounge listeners, you know? Like all the emails, here we go. We got the German flag. Got the German flock here. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Wait, I want to go around and just get where some of these people are from. Because like I said, the international listeners are OGs. All right, where are you all from? I think I'm the- in the off course. All Germany. over Germany. Berlin. Go oh, Ravens, yeah. Hampton Roads, Ravens Flock. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Where, are you, where are you from? Tell us where you're coming from. I've come from Glasgow. My mom's from Baltimore, though. So, Baltimore! Baltimore! Vancouver, Canada. Let's go. Let's go, Vancouver. All right, all right. I know we got some more. The Netherlands. The Netherlands. All right, all right. Essex, England. Woo, there we go. All right, local. Poland. Poland, here we go. We have Cork, Ireland. Let's go. Let's go. All right. We, I, we had Italy before. Baltimore, hon. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Austria. 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 It's, it's so yeah. cool. Yeah. I mean, just all over the globe, it, it's, uh, it's pretty heartwarming. All right, that's great. I'm glad you did that. I mean, one thing I've always said about our international fans is that I admire it, – it takes a lot more to be a fan – in England or Austria or Poland or Ireland than it does in Baltimore. It's harder to find the games. It's, you got to stay up late. It's I, like I found that out with the Orioles playoff games. You're waking <laughs> up at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning to watch the game. Like, I was like, man, these international fans are hardcore. They're committed. <laughs> they're committed. <laughs> that I is mean, legit. really, they're committed. And uh, I think that's one, been one of the great things about the podcast. Like, we found early on when we started doing this 
that the podcast was a way for a lot of our international fans to stay connected to the team because it's hard to watch games. It's not on TV locally and all that. There's just not as much coverage. And so we, when we started having people email us, as always, fans can email us at the lounge at ravens.nfl.net. But nice. when, we had, when we would have fans email us, also we kind of realized, like, none of these are from America. They're all from all over the world. <laughs> and it was – and so that's one of the things that, like, I think it's awesome that the Ravens are playing here in England, and there's a chance for people who don't get to see this team play hardly at all, and they get to see them play this weekend, and you can feel that energy and that excitement, and I think it feels kind of like a homecoming. It kind of feels like a homecoming for a lot of people this weekend. Yeah, it absolutely does. And, and this game, you know, it's just talking about the Ravens-Titans rivalry from back in the day. It's got me a little fired up yeah. for this game. And, and, and really... You know, I think rivalries are built out of how many times you face each other and in what stakes, right? And and there for a while, I think the Ravens-Titans rivalry kind of, you know, it died down to a degree. I mean, there, there were some big playoff games when Steve McNair was playing for them and whatnot, but then it, it felt like it got ratcheted up a little bit in 2019. You know, the Titans knocked the Ravens out of the playoffs early after that majestic season. Come back in 2020, they win at M&T Bank Stadium on a Derrick Henry walk-off. And then the Ravens go back to Tennessee in the playoffs, and Marcus Peters seals it. But you, you also left off, like, in the midst of all that, there was, like, all the logo stuff, you know? Oh, and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You, well, you, you left that one out, you know, where, where well, Harbaugh yeah, was out, kind of in the middle of the, of the you play. You would go with through that. to the, the Titans. You know, like the whole logo thing was also a big part of the conversation, too. And these two teams, like, they're built similarly. Yep. They play physical football. They have kind of physical-minded head coaches that want to play the game tough. Yep. Um, and I think all of that factors into some of that, you know, that animosity. But, yeah, so there was a logo stuff. And then when the Ravens won after the playoff game, obviously Peters. they went out there and they returned the favor and they danced all over the logo yeah. after winning that game. That was pretty great. That was pretty great. That was pretty great. So, it's, it's, you know, and since then haven't had any meetings against the Titans. But to go back up against them now, it still feels like, all right, yeah, I, you, you kind of feel a little bit of that coming back, you know, in a big international stage. Well, we talked to Roquan Smith about it a little bit earlier this week on the podcast when yep. he joined us, and uh, he made the point, like, yeah, he wasn't on the team during those games in, in 1920. Um, you heard about him. But he's like, yeah, there's been some talk about that. You know, I think there's been some conversations around that. And I think that, you know, he really has that mindset in terms of physical football. Like, that's how we're going to play. That's how we're going to operate. We're not going to be scared. We're not going to back down. We're going to play a physical style of football. And I think the Titans have that same mentality. And I, and I think that that's what's going to make this game feel like it's going to feel a little bit more like a game that Ray and Rod played in than today's NFL. I just think that's how it's going to feel on Sunday. Well, I, I think it was kind of interesting that Roquan specifically said, you know, I'm excited to bring some physical football to London, right? Yeah. This is going to be a physical football game. It's not, you know, that's Roquan's kind of excited to show the world just kind of what that kind of style of football looks like. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I, I feel good about, you know, going into the game. So the Ravens, you know, they made the decision this week to come out early just to kind of yep. set the stage. So we've been out here since Monday. So we came out here Monday with the team. Uh, the team had a chance to kind of recover from a sleep standpoint Monday night, uh, had the day off on Tuesday. Then once Wednesday arrived, they hit the ground running, normal practice routine. So they were practicing out of the Tottenham practice facility, practice on Wednesday, Thursday, and then today. And then basically, you know, just from being here myself, like you, you're – you're transitioned. You're caught up. You're not jet lagged anymore. And I yeah. think that, like, physically, you just feel way better. Well, and there, the subplot to this game is obviously the Titans took a different approach, right? They flew yeah, yeah. out Thursday night, they landed Friday morning, similar to what the Ravens did in 2017. And, like, I, I, I remember how I kind of felt, like, getting off that plane in 2017, and then you go straight to hotel practice the same day. That's what the Titans did today. And you're just kind of like, oh. You just I mean, it takes a couple of days. It takes a couple of days to kind yeah. of transition. And Mark Andrews said today, and he was very complimentary of the decision to come over early. Yep. Um, and just felt like you know this is something that has, has been really good for the team. And I think that's kind of the other element too. Like I can just tell you from being around the team and being in the team hotel this week, like there's interactions and camaraderie and guys hanging out and spending more time together. They're living together for a week. So it kind of feels like going away to summer camp to a certain extent. Like it yeah. has that element. Of course, there's a business trip component of it. But these guys are just around each other 24-7. And I think that helps from a, from a camaraderie standpoint. You're trying to turn the page from a bad loss at Pittsburgh. And so it's like this is the way you're, you're around each other. I think all of that helps build up to a, a good performance on Sunday. Yeah, and, and look – I, I kind of, at the end of the day, honestly feel like the things that usually dictate 
which team wins and which one loses will take pre precedent. Yeah, right? of course. Like, it, it, it's kind of like a talking point. You want to do it the right way, and the Ravens research, what's the right way, what's the right approach. At the end of the day, it's making plays, right? And, and, and I kind of think that, to a degree, the whole subplot here, is that going to really decide the winner? Not, not really. Yeah. Right, but it, it, it pro that's not the biggest factor. I think it's a factor. I don't think it's the biggest factor. Um, but, you know, I think that it's, it's a factor in the conversation. And so, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see just how it kind of plays out this week. I think the biggest thing, you know, really is that this team as a whole, you know, I mentioned the situational stuff. I just think that, like, the Ravens are right there. I, I think the Ravens feel like, and I'm sure a lot of people in this room feel like they should be 5-0. and You know, yep. you feel like they should be 5-0. and yep. They're that good of a team. And so I think that if they clean up the little mistakes that have cost them those two games, they clean up half of their mistakes. They're going to win these games. Then they're going to win these games. And and like, there's no reason I could not. I could see this team rattling off a whole bunch of wins. Yep. I really could. And I think that like, yeah, I, I just think you have to clean up those little mistakes, and then that's going to put you on a much better path. Absolutely agree. You know what I'm feeling, Garrett? You know what I'm feeling going to Tennessee, and I need a little help with this. You know what I'm feeling going into this game? I'm feeling uh, Big win! Let's go! Let's go! Big win, baby! Give me Thank the big win! Everybody. Thank you! Thank you! Alright, thank you for everybody watching at home. Thanks for those listening. This is a blast. Let's go! Let's go, Ravens!